Leroy Chow is a former NASA astronaut. He flew on four missions and served as commander of the International Space Station. And as always, it's great to have you with us on days like this. Oh, great to be with you. Okay, so this landing not only marks the first time a commercial vehicle has soft landed on the moon because you know, the others have crashed into the moon. Uh, also, the first time a US spacecraft has touched down since this moment here. Take a look. I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny up to mile. Okay, so it was Apollo 17 astronaut Eugene Cernan, and it was December 1972. So the question here isn't so much that, you know, why did it take so long to go back to the moon, but essentially, up until now, the US, in terms of a NASA program, has had no real interest in going back to the moon, right? Well, that's true. You know, we won the so-called space race. We beat the Soviets to the moon. Uh, we landed all the, you know, the, the uh, 12 astronauts that were able to set foot on the moon. And uh, we kind of declared victory. And there was really no political reason to spend the money to keep going or to go back in the intervening years. It's a little bit surprising. But when you think about it, you know, uh, all decisions basically come down to politics in the end. And so then if you think it from that perspective, then it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, and Odysseus is now setting up uh, on the South Pole, and that's quite unusual in and of itself. Uh, so more on that. Here's NASA administration, Bill Nelson, explaining why. Well, we want to go to the South Pole, however uh, hazardous it is, to see if there is water in abundance. Because if there's water, there's rocket fuel, hydrogen and oxygen, and we could have a gas station on the South Pole of the Moon. Which then begs the question, what happens after that? Could it serve as a way station to move on to Mars, maybe even beyond? How far down the road are we looking at all these possibilities of a moon colony and you know, transiting off to Mars, that kind of stuff? Well, sure. And to me, it makes a lot of sense to go to the moon before you go to Mars or go back to the moon, I should say, because we haven't been there in, like you said, over 50 years, certainly not with humans. And, you know, it's uh, we have to kind of relearn how to land humans on the moon. Uh, we need to test out building a habitat on another planetary body and, you know, test our rovers, our spacesuits, our uh, habitats, you know, train crews. You don't necessarily want your first astronauts on Mars to have never operated in that kind of reduced atmosphere, reduced uh, gravity environment before. And the reason you do it on the moon, moon is only about three or four days away. If you have a problem, you can get your crew back quickly. Mars, on the other hand, even at closest approach when the planets are lined up, it takes around six months one way. So if you have a problem like Apollo 13 did going outbound, you're going to be uh, over a year before you get your crew back. So you want to make sure everything's going to work uh, before you go ahead and, and do that trans-Mars injection burn. Yeah, when you're talking about transiting back and forth from Earth to the Moon, Moon to the Earth, it's now a lot more possible when you think about the cost of this mission, which was you know, done by private enterprise, just over $100 million. That's true. That's a, a, a drop in the bucket compared to other spacecraft that have been uh, built by the more customary a traditional route using big aerospace companies and uh, you know the um, the uh, traditional contracting methods between the government and these large companies and so really a hundred you know some odd million dollars sounds it is a lot of money for you and me uh, but as far as building a spacecraft it's really inexpensive uh, we heard a short time ago here on CNN from the captain of the enterprise James D. Kirk, a.k.a. Uh, William Shatner. Um, uh, he had a few interesting comments about what should be happening with this mission and as far as what should be happening here on Earth. Here he is. The moon is a perfect place to land and build. But beyond that, where are we going? What are we doing? You can't transport tens of thousands, millions of people uh, to Mars. We're, we're here. This is the place that needs to be corrected. It's an old argument, but you know, it's a relevant one at this point. Fix the problems on Earth first before worrying about going off to Mars, because Mars doesn't sound like a very nice place to live. 
Well, I agree with that. Um, you know, there are people that say, hey, we've got to figure out how to colonize Mars because we're going to need to, to go there someday. And, and of course, I'm in the camp of, and I agree that, hey, it's easier to fix the problems we've got here before we try to figure out how to colonize. Now, you know, of course, SpaceX and Elon Musk, very big on colonizing Mars. And I applaud that because, you know, it's a uh, you can tell the technological story and how you're going to do it, but the devil's in the details. And it would be really awesome to get humans to Mars and even get a small colony going. Uh, that would really be something exploration wise. But um, but yeah, I don't I, I'm definitely not one of the subscribers to, hey, we're going to ruin our planet. So we need to go find another place to live. I think Elon Musk would be great on Mars. <laughs> Thank you very much sir, for being with us. Yeah, he, he very much wants to go. He says he started SpaceX, you know, not that many years ago, frankly, for, you know, all that it's accomplished and uh, for the express purpose of colonizing Mars. And he himself wants to be a colonist. Godspeed, Elon. Godspeed. Leroy, talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you.